Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is going to be something short and simple. Again, I am now operating on a new computer system. It's not actually new, I've used it before, but it's new for you! Um, operating on a Mac, but this is the Windows side of the Mac. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to show you what I've been through and that I was right! There is a video on YouTube. A young man took the time to do this video and I'm so proud I'm so proud of being loved by you okay malignant hyperthermia this is what happens well let me let him explain it to you this is the culprit that anesthesia that junk right there and they know it and they keep using it hold on Come on, homie. Start Just how this happens. happens. But the conditions condition associated, associated with malignant, with malignant hyperthermia, hyperthermia are usually the central core disease, Duchenne muscular, muscular dystrophy, dystrophy arthrofibrosis. Hold on. The conditions associated with malignant hyperthermia go. Sorry, the dogs are in the living room and they want to get next to the heater. No. Go on. I'm going to send you guys home. You keep doing it. Sorry. Um, I am giving them more and more freedom. But with the freedom I'm giving them, I'm also limiting where they can go. Because I want them to understand that this ain't their house. They don't get to go wherever they want. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. As you see, the conditions associated with malignant hyperthermia is Duchenne muscular dystrophy. D N AMD Duchenne's muscular well it's Duchenne or Duchenne they pronounce it either way that's what I've been diagnosed with that's what the biopsy showed hold on now we have muscular dystrophy and they thought it was another form of muscular dystrophy at the same time but it turned out to be something known as myasthenia gravis another muscular disease this is what triggered the malignant hyperthermia. So what I was doing today is I said to myself, let me go ahead and look up something. This is the first time someone has ever associated, to my knowledge, that I have looked up muscular dystrophy and malignant hyperthermia. Again, I'm not the first and I won't be the last. And usually the malignant hyperthermia episode, if you don't know about malignant hyperthermia and what they cause, what they did is they showed this young man standing up from the floor. I've always had problems getting up from the floor, getting up from the bed. Just thought it was, you know, problems, you know, no big deal. Thought everybody went through it until we had a doctor ask me, the one who diagnosed me, the specialist in New Mexico, asked me to get up from the floor <laughs> to stand up from the floor you guys please understand I yelled at her and gave her more than a piece of my mind because I didn't know she was asking me to do this because it was a side effect of muscular dystrophy the ability of getting up from the ground I cannot begin to tell you how much pain I'm in when I get up from the floor because I have the solar system my solar system is ground level I often have to get down on the ground. See, getting down, especially hitting the knees, those joints are very painful. That hurts. Being on my knees, you talk about some of the most painful thing to do is to be on my knees. I hate. I don't want to get on my knees for nobody. Okay? I'd rather stand on my feet than to be on my knees. You know what I'm saying? No, seriously. Honestly. Uh, it's not that I have bad knees. It is the joints in the knees, the joints in the ankles, the joints in the hips, the joints in the shoulder. We first started noticing there was a problem. Uh, when I played basketball, I used to shoot from half court. Matter of fact, I was 60% shooting from half court. You talk about accuracy. It was just rhythm and mental memory. And I would do this in games. Actual games with referees and fans and all of that stuff, and you should have, I'm I, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of proud. In the middle of the game, 
and the coach is sitting up there telling me to pass the ball, and I walk to half court, and I launch it, and it's all net. They would get mad at me because they would talk about it's not a high percentage shot, and it's the same thing I would say to anyone else, but I don't shoot that often. Well, when I did play basketball, I, I can't play basketball anymore. I got to answer this. I'll be right back. This is SAA. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the matter is I had to take that call. That was SAA, and we were talking SAA and SACOM business. Um, what I do want to explain, and I'll, I'll be brief in this because we're not going to be past 10 minutes. Most of you are trying to offer me advice. You're trying to say, you should do this, you should do that. You guys don't get it. In this video, this gentleman explains that the common drug that is given for this is the, what is that junk called? Uh, Dracoline or something like that? Uh, forgot what it is. Uh, these are Dantrolene. No, that's not the one that was given to me, but yeah, that's similar. Okay. Let's just let you know that the one that was given to me all of the side effects dentarium or dentarium dentarium okay which is basically the same drug just a generic name that's what caused all the problems all of my problems are as a result of the overdose they were only supposed to be sacroplasmic reticulum sacroplasmic reticulum ladies and gentlemen they were only yeah there it is then truly anyway they were only supposed to give me 10 milligrams in courses of one milligram per course per dose a total course of 10 milligrams they gave me 60 in one course at one time they were panicking don't blame them all right yes i do anyway this is just me saying that the more and more I do my own research, the more and more I find evidence that supports that these idiots did something wrong and that they should be paying me. You feel me? I feel you, honey. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, SACOM. A lot of people, some of you get it. Some of you get that we're doing something that no one else was willing to do for the general public. We're helping you all create your own trust agreements. We're helping you all create your own, uh, what's the word for it? Sorry, I have some uh, glue sticks that I'm wrapping up so they don't fall all over the place. We're helping you guys create not just your trust agreement, but your contracts. We're helping you create the arbitration agreements with the QPAC and all of the SAT packs after the QPAC. We're helping individuals create contracts that have arbitration clause embedded in it and using the Bradley Christopher Stark Act as the foundation for that process. And then what we're going to do, because I did it, I said, hey guys, the only thing you need to do is go to your CPA and tell them this is what you're trying to do. And everybody went to their CPAs and the CPAs didn't know what they were talking about, thought that they were speaking a foreign, foreign alien language. It's okay. You guys don't understand that they don't teach them everything when they go through these courses and these classes. So what I am doing with SACOM is we are going to be training individuals to do the accrual method. The only problem is the applications, the video, you're going to have to go back. It was about three videos ago. You're going to have to go back, follow the instructions in that video. That video specifically said that individuals must have accounting skills, must have an accounting background. Hey, if I worked on a cash register, is that good enough? No, if you have some management skills where you had to literally do payroll, then yes, you will fit in. If you've actually had some payroll skills, then you will fit in. If you have some tax preparation skills, not where you prepared them OIDs and stuff like that, that ain't what we're looking for. We're not looking for people who are just trying stuff just to be trying. You see, we spent two hours yesterday explaining and showing and helping the members of SACOM see that everything we're doing, we showed them 
where the IRS says, yes, you can do it. That's what we were doing. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we're just a little bit past 10 minutes. There are so many other things I'd like to talk about, but we're going to end it here. But thank you all for taking the time to see a little bit more about what I've gone through. Hey, take care of yourselves. And again, just if you know anybody with muscular dystrophy, they have a high likelihood of suffering malignant hyperthermia, which is oftentimes fatal. Okay? Even though they give them this drug, oftentimes they're not able to administer it correctly, and then there's a lot of side effects with malignant hyperthermia. Take care of yourselves, people. Stay out of trouble! Gotta go.